week's episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Slack. Slack is a messaging app which brings together all your team's communication into one place, making work simpler and more productive. Go to slack.com to learn more. Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price, because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. Hey, everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. How pretty are you? Pretty good. Uh, I'm doing pretty good, too. Right now, we're doing something really, uh, really weird because... Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, our, and what is that? The guy that pretty much does everything around here, Suncast, yep, uh, he Suncast, is yeah. internetless. <laughs> he has no internet where he is right now. He's moving and they're running the lines. And, and right now, he's on a, on a LTE plan. And he's connecting yep. in, and he won't be able to edit the way that he does things. So we ran the pre-roll ad and the opening yep. video. So people mm-hmm. that are watching this live did not hear it, neither did we. But it's but if you listen to the podcast, obviously, everything should be somewhat normal. Uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> somewhat, as normal sure. as it could possibly be. Uh, <laughs> but Paul, how are you? You're good. You're doing good? Yeah. Yeah? That's bad. It, you're kind of settling in, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, work continues, right? So yeah. uh, a lot of electrical work still being done this week. Uh, painters are back, so they're doing the kitchen right now and the, this whatever this thing over here is called, the hallway. Um, this thing called the and hallway. And we had the uh, uh, plumber in today as well. He replaced our shower, like the yeah. faucet bits or whatever. Very so, nice. yeah, we're getting there. Right now I have one kid at her great grandparents house and the other one is upstairs sleeping. So right now I'm there's no distractions. I could do a show properly. I got yelled yep. at last week by somebody. Oh yeah? Yeah, he goes the guy goes on Twitter. He's like, "Hey, listen, your kid crying in the background? Not cute." And I oh, go, boy. "Okay." And I go, "Okay, I said, "What is your solution for my problem?" Because obviously, yep. Are you going to babysit? Fix- and he goes, "I'm just letting you know. It's annoying." I said, "Again, what is your solution to the problem?" Would you like me to put the kid outside when I'm doing a show? I, I, so that was uh, so today, uh, whoever you were, I forgot your name. I hope you're happy because my kids are all outside. <laughs> this is on you. <laughs> this is all on you. Uh, guys, we have so much to talk about. I want to, um, you know, uh, there was a there was a interesting benchmark that came out regarding the best camera phones and. Mm-hmm. I I, st- I I don't know. I, I just posted the link like with the image and people really got defensive over this, over okay. whether or not the iPhone 10 is a better camera, th- has a better camera than the Pixel 2. We'll go all into this, obviously. I also want to talk about this. These two things that I got here, Paul, from Logitech okay. to review. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that Logitech? Yeah. This is Logitech. This is the 4K Pro webcam, and this is So there the, are two different things. Yeah, and this is the C922 Pro Stream webcam. These are two separate things that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to do a okay. review of these. I have not done it yeah. yet. I'm going to do an unboxing and everything, but you know, rather, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I've, I've used this camera, and I had a couple hiccups early on, but I have not used this. So I want to talk about this mm-hmm. and a whole lot more, obviously, uh, before we continue on with the show. But before we do... Let's take a moment and talk about our sponsor, and that's Slack. Many of you guys know that I started a, uh, a job, a real job, not podcasting, not, nothing with tech. It's whatever you, whatever you imagine my job is, it is the total opposite of this. <laughs> Paul knows what it is. It's the total opposite of what I do here. Um, but one thing that we do, I'm in, you know, it's a corporate position. I am responsible to communicate with my team, and unfortunately... It is a problem that many companies face is constant communication and organization and uh, just keeping the information flowing. And I encountered this problem because there's different departments and everybody's so separated. Uh, So I implemented a service called Slack. And this is this is actually crazy. This is prior to me taking them as an ad. And it just so happened that it worked out. Uh, But I really this is the best thing. Slack is a messaging app. 
which brings all your team's communications together, giving everyone a shared workspace where conversations and organization can happen and it's easily accessible. There's over a thousand apps that you could integrate. Uh, there's also different app ex examples, including uh, Salesforce, Zendesk, Google Drive. You can implement all of this. Uh, and Khan in our terms says Burger King. He's absolutely right. I am the new Burger King. Uh, so this was a major problem for us where different departments are getting information a little later. So I implemented Slack and it's great because you could do images, you could do your documents, you could have a constant conversation, you could have different departments and different admins assigned to it. It's a great service. If you are in charge of communication for your company or you are experiencing a issue with this or you just want to try something new, I highly, highly recommend going to slack.com and checking them out. Um, there's no promo code. You just go to slack.com and you can check it out. It's a great service. I use it personally every single day. Um, I had to teach some of the people in the office how to do it. And first they thought, oh, wow, I don't want to I don't want to try something new. Why can't we just text each other? And that is the worst way to do it. I spent like five minutes just showing it to them and everybody now loves it. Slack.com where work happens to so find out why go to slack.com. I also want to thank them for supporting what the tech. Paul. Talk yes, about sir. slackers. Uh, let's talk about. Let's take a moment to talk about the um, iPhone 10 camera. Okay. Is it better than the Pixel, or is it not better than the <laughs> Pixel? So I mean, I, I don't have this. one. <laughs> so and somebody. From, all I can do is go based on what others are saying, and based on what others are saying, it appears to be just about the best still camera in the market, and I would say it's on par, probably overall, with like the Pixel 2 XL. Yeah, it, it listen a, a ninety nine or a ninety eight and a and a whatever the score. It, it's virtually identical, right? So I yeah, I actually, score. I mean, honestly, I think a Note eight is in the running up there. I th even the iPhone eight plus is probably somewhere near there. Uh, last year's Pixel XL is somewhere near there. Um, there's a lot of phones that are kind of right. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy S eight plus uh, and S eight, even though they're single yeah. lens uh, cameras, I think they're all pretty great. By the way, the S eight plus. Um, did not do too well. If you look at the ranking, it's like an eighty something now. For still, uh, for overall, or for still? I think it was for overall. For still, yeah, I was okay. actually very surprised how low it was for still as well. I was, yeah, I mean, I was I surprised think at that, that. Camera's great. Uh, that's one I have used. Yeah. Um. So I use an S7 and the camera's great. I have an S6 and I think the camera's great. So you know, it, it's it's very. It depends. It depends on what kind of photos you're taking. You know, I always say that the iPhone is the best camera if you just want to pick this thing up and take a photo of it. That that LG phone out there uh, that that has like all this pro mode stuff, that may be better if you want to fiddle around and take, you know, and play with the, the pro settings. But most people are picking up their phone and doing this. They're not looking if HDR is even on. They're just take snapping a photo. So I posted yeah. this image uh, of, of, the, uh, of the ranking and I got like all this like, ah, gotcha journalism people. <laughs> and, that's awesome and one of them i forgot he runs a microsoft site like a blog oh really uh, yeah michael allison from oh. ms power users okay so he sent this like he's like oh once people he goes oh sites deox uh d what is deoxo deoxo mark right yeah i don't know how you say how, it how, yep. how do you say it i, I dxo mark yeah maybe. dxo mark okay he goes sites dxo mark <laughs> Gets narrative challenge now depends on who you ask. There was no narrative; it was just a freaking link. It was an image. <laughs> I don't. I don't own either camera. I don't own either phone. I don't have a. Someone. Side. Um, I tweeted something last week, and uh, I don't remember what it was. It doesn't matter. I just retweeted it. I, I I didn't write it myself. I just saw something. I thought actually it was something your friend John Posser, uh, Posser, whatever his name is, yeah. um, tweeted, and I retweeted it. I thought John it was Puss funny. Face. That's what I call him. Okay. <laughs> anyway, someone was like, this is completely bullshit. You know, this is not true. You know, blah, blah. and I'm like, yeah. dude, it's a retweet. Not, a, I didn't endorse it for president. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> like seriously, get over yourself. Yeah. No. Um, I think the problem is right now that everybody has to pick a sign. We've spoken about this, but so I got, I spent some time with the iPhone 10, uh, the other mm -hmm. day. I have to tell okay. you, uh, that notch doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but look at your hair. I, well, Actually, if you want to see my hair, I, I'm actually dressed up in your favorite outfit. Yeah. The backwards hat and the t-shirt. But here, here we go. There's the hair. Wow. This is what okay, it looks let's, like. Let's, let's go back to the way that let's was. Let's go back to the hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but I was not that upset over the notch. Uh, yeah. It is an it's it's idiotic in my opinion. Yeah. It really is. But oh, it yeah. wasn't a oh my god, this thing is hideous. It's a nice looking phone. The rounded edges, I'm not that crazy about as far as the design goes with the rounded I edges. I also do not like the rounded edges that the Google Pixel 2 XL has. It just seems it's fake. Yeah. It's like there's a square screen in there. And they, they've literally just, you know, like put something over it. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the yeah. goofiest. I'm not crazy about the rounded edges, but whatever. Yeah. You know, it's still, the phone is a nice phone. The camera, however, I have to tell you, the um, the portrait mode is mm -hmm. night and day compared to the iPhone 7 Plus. Oh, yeah, that's good. I, I, that was, I, I that was terrible I just want to let before. people know, because if you are... I know for a lot of people, they don't really care about the photography of the, these phones. They just want a decent photo to post on Facebook or Twitter. But for me, I, I give a crap about it. This is just yeah, what I'm into. And Paul's into so we talk about it. And I know many of our viewers are into it, too. Yep. Um, I played around with the portrait mode, and I actually used my... I, I should... God, I, you know, I'm a dope. I should have gotten the images from my friend that got it. So I did a comparison. I took some photos with mine and I took some photos with his. Um, it was at a bar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lighting in a bar is not meant for photography. Yeah, that's um, why it's a good test. It was a very good test because was it phenomenal, the photo? No. Was it way <laughs> better than the portrait mode in the S in the, on the iPhone 7 Plus? Absolutely. Night and day. Not even comparable. This is a joke of a of a beta application, and they finally perfected it in the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10. And yep. this was just the test to see how crappy it was. Right. I think what happened, you know, remember it was in beta. And you were using the beta, and you said, you know, the hope is that by the time that they become fine, it becomes a final release, it'll be fixed. That is not the case. It did not get yeah. fixed. So right. if that's something that you're looking for, I'm telling you, it, it's a way better option. Now, I don't know how it compares to the Pixel's portrait mode. Yeah, I don't either. That's one thing I haven't really tested yet. I, I, I've tested it to the extent that I put it into portrait, portrait mode, looked at something, and was like, okay, I can see what it's trying to do. Uh, I haven't taken any photos yet. Um, I, I suspect the iPhone version is better, frankly. There's two cameras. Uh, that's one of the things I think that's key to making that work really well. Yeah. And I, and Apple has experience with this. They've been doing this for over a year now. So yeah. I think they learned from the iPhone seven plus what to, you know, what they did wrong. And I think they fixed it in this version. It's probably pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I would guess that's yeah. my guess. I, I'm that's a, that's a very good guess. And it, and, it, and I thought it was very good. Now I didn't use it outside. It was dark. So I did, however, play around with, you know, like they have that picture that that stock photo that they've used and they've demoed where the girl is hanging out outside of the light, mm -hmm. like the, the street lamp. And yep. it's this like beautiful shot and they're taking it. So I did one of those. I didn't get the same results that Apple got <laughs> with, sure. with the street lamp on the corner of my house, but it was very it was way better than the previous version. So this is something that you're into then get it now with the the deox uh, sorry uh, D, how do you say it D, I don't, dxo mark DxO is how mark, i would say it i okay. don't know yeah we'll stick with that with dxo mark if you look at it so we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago if you look at their website that overall ranking people are right that is not how you should go based on picking the phone with the best camera you should really, really look at what the individual score is and i think the what what where did apple won out in photos Right, that's what it was, in actual the picture, the the still image, but they lost that's in right. video. Yeah, which I, by the way, kind of blows my mind, because um, I would have thought the video thing is one of the things Apple would have gotten right, and if I'm not mistaken, that phone can actually shoot 4K video. Yeah, and I the think video, it's 60 frames though, a second. Th so they got 101 as far as overall photos go, stills, but they got an 89 yep. in video. Yeah, it was significantly worse. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's interesting to me yeah. compared to the Pixel, I, which got a yeah, 96 I don't really, and a 99. 99 for photos and 96 for video. Yep. I've not looked at the video capabilities of the phone. I actually don't shoot too much video on a phone. Yeah. Um, I, I, I care a lot more about the photos. Yeah, I um, I think it's, uh, t t the reality is whatever you want to get, it's fine. They're both fine. They're both good. They're both really good. It's not a significant change you know we're not i think everybody's making decent camera phones now if you're in that top 
rank. You know, yeah, the, if you're going to buy a flagship, you're you're probably going to have a really good camera. experience. You're probably going to have a really good camera experience. If you're nitpicky, then go with whatever you're going. But the reality is, yep. anything in that top five, you're going to get. And a you know, great photo with experience. regards to the iPhone 10, you, you, what you've said, where the notch doesn't seem like a problem, is what others have said. Um, I think it looks ludicrous, but I don't have one. And I think the more important thing there is just that um, iPhone users tend to be pretty satisfied with their devices, yeah. obviously. Um, it's a really nice high-end device. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think most people who buy the thing are going to be really happy with it. So um, that stands in sharp contrast with the Pixel 2, by the way, because they, or the Pixel 2 XL, where since they announced this thing, there's been like 150 different problems with it. And my device is fine, you know. Um, but that's what it is. It's fine. You know, it's not, it's not wonderful. It's not like, Oh my God, this changes the world. You know, I mean, I think with the iPhone, there's a sense that Apple is really taking their product in a new direction. And it's, um, you know, from a company that is really more comfortable with evolution. I mean, the, the iPhone for them, the iPhone 10 is certainly more of a revolution. And I think that's exciting for people. Yeah. You know, that's understandable. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, we do have this to talk about and a couple other things, but I, I wanted to talk to you about your Xbox experience. Mm -hmm. So you're all in now, right? This is your life. It's taken over. <laughs> yeah. This week has been yeah. a dumpster fire is if you care about productivity. Um, what can you, can you talk about it yet or no? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's all. Okay. Out. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So why don't you go into it? I'm, I'm curious about your <laughs> overall experience and, and yeah, how it's yeah. been for you because, uh, I know a couple of people that are very excited for this device. Yeah, and they should be. Yeah. Um, it's awesome, right? And so the thing that's interesting about it to me is that um, it will improve any game on any display. Um, the developer doesn't have to do anything to make that happen. A anything you play on this will be better on this no matter how you do it, right? So that's step one. Um, if the developer chooses to enhance the game for Xbox One X, they can do that in a variety of ways. They can bump up the resolution. They could add HDR. Um, they can bump up the frame rate to 60 frames a second. They could do all of those things. They could do some combination of those things. They could mix and match those things in the game. They could change it depending on what part of the game you're in. Um, those things all make the game significantly better, especially on a 4K display. But even if you're sticking with 1080p, it's still better, especially if you get an enhanced game because those games will, I think of it as down res. I don't know how else to say it, but Microsoft calls, uh, not Microsoft, I'm sure it's an industry term, is super sampling. Yeah. And what it basically means is you're pumping more pixels, pixels yeah. than can be supported by a lower resolution screen. And so it kind of does, I don't know what, the, again, I'm not really sure what to call it. It's not quite anti-aliasing, but it's something like it's super sampling is what it is. Um, it will look better even on a 1080p display. Um, you know, the, 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 the value proposition here is kind of a, a continuum from the original Xbox One through the 4K-capable, HDR-capable Xbox One X, but also beyond that because it can play many, many backward-compatible Xbox 360 games and a growing selection of original Xbox console games as well. And, of course, a lot of these games go back and forth between the PC and the Xbox One as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's $500. Um that's a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about it. Well, five hundred dollars, and, and if you don't, that. if you don't have a four K TV, I swear to God, if Siri jumps in one more time, I'm going to snap his phone in half. Like, what a did twig. you say that Siri got very I, upset? Yeah, what? Did, how could I see? I hate Siri so much. <laughs> now it wants to install a software update. Of course it does. Oh, um. <laughs> so, give me one second. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. swear to God, I have to go through like a license agreement. It's, oh my okay. God. I, I yep. And it's not there anymore. I don't know. I'm sorry. Anywho. Um, Did you just throw it? <laughs> no. Well, I dropped it. So. <laughs> I hate that thing. So, okay, um, so he has a question for you. I'm sure so, the iPhone 10 is awesome. I hate this iPhone. $500 plus. Hardware box is expensive. Don't have, There's no doubt about it. But if you don't have a 4K TV, now you got to well, go out and get a 4K TV. Look, if you. There's, there's a segment of the population out there who doesn't need this discussion. They don't care. They're not listening. They're going to buy it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So we can skip over those guys. Good. Good sure. for them. There's also a segment of the population that's going to skip over this because they're not going to buy it for another reason. They just don't care about Xbox. That's cool. That's fine. But in the middle, there's this audience of people that may or may not be interested in playing video games on a dedicated console and having the best possible experience. And, and Microsoft offers you choices, right? You can get an Xbox One S very inexpensively with free games. And it's an incredible deal. And it does a lot of what the Xbox One X does for a lot less money. Yeah. Um, what you're not getting is that 4K, or at least I should say 
um, uh, resolutions higher than 1080p because it can actually scale in between as well. Um, and you're not going to get 60 frames a second. Um, you, you can get HDR, um, and you can get HDR in, in entertainment content as well. You can get 4K and HDR in entertain, entertainment yeah. content like Netflix and so forth. Obviously, Blu-ray as well. Uh, Super H, what do they call it? Uh, the new, yeah. The Ultra new, H, yeah. whatever it's called. Um, so you have all those capabilities and you have these choices. And I think the, the thing about the Xbox One X is even if you don't want it right now, even if you couldn't afford it right now, um, if you buy into the Xbox ecosystem, Everything that you buy, all of the games, all of the peripherals are all going to work if you ever do upgrade to that thing. And the day that you do, every single thing you do is going to look and play better. Every single thing. Yeah. That's incredible. Is, I mean, that's just Is incredible. that the first time that we've seen that, that a console has come out and it's improved the existing games that were out previously? Um, I would imagine that the PlayStation 4 Pro could make some claim to that, but it's not as dramatic and it's not as widespread. Yeah. Certainly its 4K capabilities were exaggerated, <laughs> you know, for the most part. Um, I think with the PlayStation Pro, the, the understanding there is like, okay, look, we're going to get true 1080p now at rock solid 1080p for the yeah. most part in big games. And that's okay. It's not horrible. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about this console to me is you'll notice, you know, when the, when it came out on Tuesday, I guess, actually before it even came out, um, people published reviews of the device. And I, I published a first impressions article because the thing that changed between that day, which was a week ago, Friday and Tuesday, and between that day, which was a week ago, Friday and say today is that every single day, more and more games are coming out with enhanced for Xbox one assets. Yeah. meaning some combination of HDR, 4K, 60 frames a second, whatever. Um, every one of those games looked awesome on launch day, and a lot of those games look even more awesome today, and that's what's going to keep happening over the next several days and weeks and months because more and more of this stuff is going to happen. And, um, you know, there were games that I played before it was released that looked great um, that were not enhanced yet, you know, yeah. and you would have thought they were. And I switched back and forth between the 1080p uh, display I have and a 4K display over there um, to kind of gauge the difference if there was any. I, I, I've not completed this part of it yet, but I'm looking at side-by-side -side tests so I can see how the Xbox One S compares to that, both from a kind of a graphical fidelity standpoint, which is very obvious in many cases, um, but also like a load time thing. Because one of the other benefits of uh, the new console is that it supposedly has a faster hard drive. I don't actually know what that is i do know it's not an ssd what's, what's the hard drive yeah what's the hard drive that it comes with it's just a one terabyte drive right so it's it's good you know depending on the games you're playing it's good for i would say somewhere between 15 and 18 games you can obviously add an external what, drive what to kind it. of what, what kind of drive yeah, is it's it that? what kind of rpm so the, is it a hybrid or yeah uh i don't know i don't know so the xbox one s has a 5400 rpm hard drive it's a standard hard drive standard, it runs yeah. off a sata port it's not particularly fast yeah um this one, I, I, I don't know. I just I don't want to say anything ignorant. I don't yeah. actually know. I, my guess is that it is still SATA-based, which is going to limit the performance. And I will tell you anecdotally that there are some games that load very slowly on the Xbox One S, like Forza, which is a really big title, yeah. that still load very slowly on this console. So um, it's probably some percentage faster, 10, 30, somewhere in there, depending on the game. But it's not dramatic. It's not like half again as fast. It's not... Uh, that part of it hasn't been dramatic to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that we're not getting an SSD in those. I am too. Yeah, I am too. Um, the other thing I'm surprised they didn't learn their lesson with with the Xbox One line over time is making it easier to replace the internal or making it possible to replace the internal I mean, storage. You used what to that be able to, be. but yeah, right. I mean, but not with the Xbox One. Yeah. So. I, to me, that should be like a, a panel pops off the back. You can pop the drive out, pop yeah. your own drive in. It should be something more sophisticated than the SATA 3 or whatever it is. Because here's my, here's my argument here. What yep. benefit is it for Microsoft to not offer that to you? Because they can, remember, they could sell Xbox One hard drives and people would buy it, especially if you're dropping $500 for the console. You have no problem spending another 100 or something dollars for some people if you're a heavy, heavy hardcore gamer to get it. Or... You could go get your own hard drive and pop it in. I listen. If this thing had like an M3 SSD thing, yeah. I would have spent another two hundred dollars 
just to get that. You it know would, what? Someone is cool. doing it. Someone is going to open this thing up and do it. Well, the problem is it won't give you any benefit. You're, you're actually, I don't know really? if this is true on this one. This is the problem, so I don't know yet. On the Xbox One S, you're actually better off using USB 3 storage. It's faster. It's faster than using oh, SATA 3. So on this device, it's possible that that hard drive controller is improved to some capacity. I think someone on Twitter told me that the drive that comes in it is some kind of a hybrid thing where they have a little bit of SSD cache yeah, or something. Yeah, it has to. Um, I, I hope so. But, I mean, honestly, from, I, I just don't understand why it's not SSD. Like, SSD has been around forever. I, I, so I don't know. Okay, so I'm trying to find. I get well storage size things. Obviously, a one terabyte SSD is very expensive. So you do not recommend getting the green drive. This, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's actually, like that's the slow, is that the slowest one? I think the green green is the slow. Slowest? What do you, yeah. Oh, you mean the? Uh, I'm sorry, you mean the WD green yeah. drives? Yeah, right. No, no, you don't want that. You want the black. Yeah, but they don't. That's that's internal though. That you can't you can't put that in there anyway. Uh, okay, what, so you you want an external drive? It's just. It, I mean, I'm looking here at their specs. And all I see is one, starting one terabyte. It's not starting. It's that's all there is. <laughs> yeah. Know, this, this, well, this no article says starting starting is story. starting at one terabyte. So I guess yeah. you could get an external drive. But I guess you're yeah. right. If you if, because it's USB three, if you do if you get an external drive connecting USB, you will most likely be probably faster, yeah. and you get a yep. set of drive externally. You know. That's right. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. I'm excited bad. for this. I'm gonna get one. Um, I wish it was different. I'm going to get one, but part of it. I think I need to get my 4K TV first. Yeah, I mean, in the scope of outlaying money, um, you're going to derive a lot more pleasure from a 4K TV, right? Because uh -huh. you're going to do it, use it with other things. And if someone has already invested in some kind of Xbox hardware, whatever it is, um, I guess I would advise to do that first. And if you have an Xbox One S in particular, you're going to see big advantages by going 4K and HDR2, by the way. I would make sure you do that. Um, 4K HDR because again, that will work with uh, Netflix and all those services, and it will work with the Blu-ray discs yeah. as well. Which, by the way, still offer the absolute best in picture quality. Um, you know, a disc, right? Which is kind of old school, but you know, if, if that's what you care about, there it is. So, I think when we when I was at your house, we watched a 4K. Was it a Blu-ray we were watching? Yeah, it was a yeah, disc. It was probably okay. Mad Max or yeah. something like that. So, and it looked phenomenal. So, yeah, have yeah. you watched? Uh, like, have you been watching Stranger Things? Or no? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you're watching in 4K, right? That's right. Okay. How does it look on Netflix's 4K compared to the Blu-ray? So I actually have not been blown away by Stranger Things in particular from a kind of a visual quality okay. perspective. Um, I have streamed some 4K content that looks exceptional. So for example, I bought a, I bought a, the movie, that new King Kong movie from actually Google at the time um, in 4K because I wanted to see what that was like. Yeah. And I got to be honest, like that looks, <laughs> it looks pretty good. And of course, since then I've gotten 4k content through Apple on the Apple TV as well. I think there's a, um, you're going to run into issues when you're streaming 4k, right? From bandwidth, uh, perspective, um, you, streaming can go down to from YouTube quality to Blu-ray quality, depending on how things are going. Um, you're still going to get the best and most consistent results with a Blu-ray, whatever they call it, Ultra HD, yeah. whatever it is. Because yeah. those things support, again, you know, it's like, um, what is it, 31, 3120, I think, yeah, or 3180 by two, whatever, the, you know, 266 or whatever, 2660, whatever. Uh, they support HDR. You know, they can look incredible. Yeah. But by the way, I also, I bought, when, when we got the Xbox One S a year and a half ago, whatever that was, I bought four Blu-ray discs to test this very thing. And, um, Three of them look fantastic. Uh, the Revenant was one of them. It looks great. Uh, the Mad Max movie was one. And for some reason, I can't remember the third. But the fourth one that looks terrible, like it looks terrible, it looks is terrible. that movie, is Deadpool. Really? Yeah, That's which is a great movie. But it look, it, the, it's supposed to be HDR and, and it's not. 4K. And it just, it's like, ugh, like, it just doesn't look great. Um, I, I got a question for you. Here's a question. Somebody had just asked me this, and I was curious. You could connect your webcam to the Xbox One, right? I don't. That I don't know. I don't believe so. You mean to do like a connect type thing? Yeah. No, I don't think you can do that. Somebody just asked me, can I connect my webcam to my Xbox? And I believe you can. No, I don't believe so. Like, in other words, you want to, maybe you could use it for Skype or something. Oh, look. Yeah. Xbox opened up to, uh, to third party webcams. Apparently yeah, but not for connect type stuff. Not for connect you type could, stuff. Yeah, but you possibly could do... for that kind of thing. Yeah. Sure. Interesting. Okay.
I, I you can use a um, uh, like a controller based headset. You can to do, do Skype voice control. You could do Skype, right? Also. So you could bypass connect that way. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Uh, we do have a lot more to talk about, obviously, but I do want to continue and uh, talk about our sponsor. And if I could find this, there we go, Andrew. You and your my 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 fat little fingers keep messing up when I'm clicking on the buttons. But I want to take a moment to talk about my favorite company in the world, and that's Casper. Paul has a Casper mattress. I have a Casper mattress. My boss just bought a Casper mattress. Uh, two of my colleagues bought casper mattresses during meetings they make me do casper live reads now because they find it so amusing when i do this uh they just discovered that i have the secret life of podcasting and <laughs> i did they make me do live reads before the meeting and i always do a casper read because it's so easy to talk about something that you actually use every single day and that's my casper mattress uh the best sleep i've gotten in years uh, for two i guess two years now i've been sleeping on this thing it's been unbelievable i had a very expensive plush top mattress that was that i paid a couple thousand dollars for if you believe it or not uh, a couple grand i paid for this stupid thing and it was miserable I, I hated it and i finally got casper and i wanted to give it a shot and thank god because it's made my life so much easier they have a great offer for you guys you can save an additional 50 dollars towards a mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash andrew and entering the promo code andrew at checkout terms and conditions do apply but they have a huge selection of mattresses. They even have uh, they have three different types of mattresses now. It's not just the one anymore. They have three different types of mattresses. They even have dog beds. They have duvet covers. They have uh, foundations for your bed. They, it's a one-stop shop. A dog bed, Paul. My dog can sleep on a Casper mattress. My dog actually does sleep on a Casper mattress. Sleeps on my mattress. Uh, and you could try it out to 100 night uh, sleep guarantee. You could try this thing out, 100-day sleep guarantee. You could try this thing out and test it out and see if it works for you. I'm telling you guys, it is crazy. This thing comes in a box. Comes in a box. It's so amazing. And you could just send it right back if it's not for you, which I most likely it will be for you. I don't know anybody that's been unhappy with a Casper mattress. On a quick note, I gave the story a couple months ago, and I want to remind everybody. My mother-in-law got scammed on Facebook by a company that resembles Casper, okay? I'm not gonna say the name, it resembles them. And they got the mattress and she called me, she goes, I ordered a Casper, I ordered a Casper. I was so happy for her. Cause her, her husband, my, my wife's uh, stepfather has a really bad back, he has all these issues. So they ordered a Casper mattress. They got, they didn't order a Casper. He, she ordered the, the uh, almost like a knockoff of them. And she said it was the worst experience because she got rid of a very expensive mattress, same exact thing as me, and she went to this mattress, and it was terrible. And she was almost upset with me. And I said, "Wait, wait a minute. Let me. What brand is it?" And she told me, "I go. That's not a Casper." She sent it right back. Called Casper up immediately. They sent her a mattress, knowing what happened. It was like next day she got this mattress. So phenomenal company, great support, great product. Casper.com/slash/Andrew. I want to thank Casper for supporting the show. Paul. <laughs> yes, sir. Where do you want to go from here? <laughs> just in life it's like where do you want to go today where do you want to go today is there anything you would like to bring up because i have a couple things here but if there's anything you want to go into uh any uh windows 10 news no i mean uh microsoft just put out an rs4 build <coughs> excuse me yesterday which is kind of a big deal because there's some new features in there but um yeah nothing i mean, nothing we, major what do we I get with rs4 that. what's that what do we get with the build Excuse me, I'm sorry. What did you say? What do we get with the belt? See, Paul doesn't want to answer this question. No, I didn't hear <laughs> I you right. No, no, no. What, <laughs> so, what are you... There's some Microsoft Edge stuff. They've added like the ability to mute tabs, which is a big deal. They added the ability to add um, EPUB files to your ebook library, which to me is a big deal because before those things were just completely separate. I never understood that. So now you can do that. That's kind of cool. Hopefully those things will sync uh, between your PCs, I haven't even installed the build okay. yet. Um, and then there's a bunch of uh, changes to settings where they move things around, and they've added that acrylic effect, which is I think is kind of cool, that translucency thing, um, to some of their keyboards. And uh, I think that's about off the top of my head. That's what I remember. I think that's most of it. Yeah. Um, I'm very much liking, uh, <laughs> as I've said multiple times, this laptop right here. Yep. And... Um, it's, it's actually interesting because we, when you use a product every day, you kind mm -hmm. of forget what makes it really good, right? You get numb to these things. So I've been using half and half. I use the Mac 
for heavy duty stuff. Like I had to do some photo editing and this is a quad core and this is not. So yep. I had to do some heavy duty stuff. So I've been using this all day and I forgot the things that I really enjoy about the Mac. You know, I, I forgot what they were for a little bit. And then I've been using, I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it. And then I go back to windows and I'm like, oh, I get why this is so perfect for me. So it's interesting when you leave the ecosystem and you go back and forth, but I have to tell you, um, I, I think I'm preferring windows over the, over Mac OS. Um, just mm. for the, you know, I've always said the Mac OS was a little bit more of a simplified OS. Um, <laughs> I don't think that is the case. That might've been yeah. the case 10 years ago, but I no, I think it's actually, it's good for, obviously if you know the system, fine. I mean, that's fine. I know the but system, I, honestly, but, but it's, it's more well, of a power user. How well do you know your Mac? I don't think we know What's our that? Mac. How well do you know, how well do you know your Mac? <laughs> You How know? well do I know the Mac? No, like in general, like we don't, we don't really know. It's all magic, right? That's what Steve Jobs said. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, okay. Just does I, it. For you. I find it to be a little obtuse, but you do. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm curious about what other people's experiences are, and I always ask this question to people: um, Do they use both Mac and Windows equally, and what do they prefer for what? And it's a very hard answer to get because most people don't use computers that way. Um, but my wife, for example used Macs and then went to Windows and then now she can't go back to a Mac. She's just yeah. she 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 likes what she likes now. So it's interesting. Um I had an article here on your site that I wanted to go. Um you had a Paul's Tech Makeover article mm -hmm. on your site. I wanted to touch on this a little bit, but now I, I okay. logged out and I can't get back in <laughs> okay. to your site. Which one, was it the it was latest one? It was a premium article. Yeah. I can't log into yeah. my premium account right now. But um, this is interesting because you really have had a tech makeover with, you know, over the last two years, you really have, because yeah. you think about it, you sure. are, um, you're using the pixel now, right? From the yeah. iPhone, mm -hmm. you've gone over to Google. Yeah. Uh, well, a couple I, yes, years ago, you were... I mean, I don't want to, that sound too dramatic because the truth is I've always kind of gone back and forth. And if you think about the past year before I kind of switched to Android full time, um, I was using the, the pixel XL every time I went away anyway, you know, especially in Europe. So I spent, I think four weeks this past year in Europe or outside of the United States. And because of the exceptional camera capabilities and the super low cost, uh, connectivity stuff yeah. on project Fi, it made tons of sense. So it's not like I, you know, it's not, it's not a huge life change. Um, but Yes, I, I have switched to Android, yeah. Yeah, so, but that's not the only thing, right? You change your TV, you got, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're doing that, you're doing a lot of other things. Um, yep. Has there been any, like, what has been the most difficult change for you with, with your current <laughs> setup? Has it been I changing the well, okay, receptacles, so I would Paul? say The receptacles? The, the, the cord cutting stuff did not go well. Um, In what I way? think that's something long-term that could work and will work, right? You know, one of the issues we ran into, for example, was that uh, YouTube video or YouTube TV is actually very high quality. It but is. But to date, they've not had an app on a box that goes in the living room, right? So if you wanted to do it off of Fire TV or Apple TV or your Xbox or whatever, those apps did not exist. So um, we ended up getting cable. And then, like, literally the day cable arrived, YouTube announced we we're putting these apps out for those devices. It's and coming so out. Yeah. We I don't know when, though. The Xbox One, for example. Um, oh, you have you have YouTube TV on the Xbox One right now? Yeah. So when it when so is sorry. it on Apple TV yet? Not yet, but it's on the Xbox One now. Okay, and Google. It's TV. coming. It's coming soon. So uh, that makes a big difference because previously what you had to do was run it on your phone and then Chromecast it to the display or whatever. And you know it's okay. And and look, maybe I'm just an old guy and I can't handle that kind of you know new way of doing things. But I you know I didn't really like it. I I I want to pick up a remote and you know click things and have it just work right. So. You know, cable's kind of old school, but it works. It works. And we have a TiVo box. It's nice, actually. It's fine. You know, so that's been fine. Um, the, I think the there are a lot of big changes. I mean, one of the big changes, and this is still one that's a little bit up in the air, but we're currently still kind of 100% wireless here, meaning like Wi-Fi. Um, and that was not the case for me for many, many years. Like, we've... We had wired uh, at least part of the house back in Dedham for Ethernet, all of my own stuff, everything that we do, for example, the podcast uh, computer, my main computer, um, the servers when I had those or the NAS, 
were always on wired connections, period. Like there was no wireless. I mean, there was mm -hmm. wireless, you know, if I was on the laptop in the den or something, but we had wires everywhere that it mattered. And this is a much bigger house than we used to live in before the distances are greater, you know. I got that mesh network and I and I I kind of figured like like it would be like cord cutting. Like I'll test this. It will probably be okay. Yeah. But I know I'm gonna want to wire the house for Ethernet. Sure. And I haven't had to. <laughs> so okay. So you have the total um, opposite problem that I I do because I was wired yeah. and yep. by the way, I there is an iOS app now for YouTube TV and it was updated on November fourth. No, iOS, yeah, but not Apple TV. It just says iOS like, devices. Words, it just says it's available on iOS devices. So I don't know yeah, if that but means. Apple TV is not an iOS device. It's a oh, Apple, Apple, it's a Apple yeah. TVOS device. TVOS. So yeah. in other words, on that thing, what you could do is the same thing I was doing, which is, in this case, you use um, AirPlay to play it from your phone or whatever okay. to the big yeah, screen I don't on want the Apple. I just want yeah, to no, there still isn't. Well, it's coming. It's coming yeah, soon. Yeah. So I was, I had everything wired. And Wi-Fi got so good for me that I said, OK, I don't need to have it wired anymore if I'm in the bedroom because I'm getting 150 megabits a second in my bedroom from just from this floor here. Just going straight up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm still in Wi-Fi hell um, <laughs> for like a like couple months now. My Wi-Fi has totally degraded and right. I cannot for the life of me fix it. I've changed the frequency. I've changed the channels. And when the sun sets, Paul. So does my Wi-Fi. I have no answer to this. I, and I've had a lot of people try to help me with it. And everything we've tried, it, it, it's no luck. Both lines, both, uh, you know, I even have a yeah. Time Warner no, backup. No, I, that, That's I failing too. Something is interfering. I expected that to be the issue here. Something is interfering. So now I either um, have to do a mesh like you. Yeah. Or I have to wire everything up again. You can get uh, put tinfoil on everything. That will work too. I can put tinfoil on everything. <laughs> Um, I, anyway, I, I've been pleasantly surprised by the mesh thing. Like it's worked great. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, I could still picture doing it. I've actually spoken to my electrician about the possibility. And I honestly, that's just me being me. Like there's no really good reason to even worry about it, but to do what? just to run, run, just to run the wire. But the one, the, so the one happy change that's occurred here was, with regards to that is when we came, we came out in July before we moved, we installed the cable. We got the cable modem installed. We got the Google wire wireless network thing set up. That stuff was out in the sunroom, which is over here to my right to your left, I guess <clears throat> in like a mess of wires on the floor. And so I figured when we moved, uh, I'd move it. There's ethernet everywhere in the house. I, I, I figured I'd just put it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, as it turns out the, um, Ethan, uh, the, uh, sorry, the uh, coaxial in my house is as Mickey mouse as every other thing related to wires is in this house. And my father who had done this had split the coax everywhere to get it into every room, multiple, you know, whatever. So the signal was so degraded, it wasn't going to work, whatever. And when, so I was like, I'm like, well, it's close enough over there. I, we can put a little cabinet. It'll be fine. Yeah. And then when we got the cable installed, we finally got cable TV installed. The guy came in to do it. And he says, there's no coax in this room. <laughs> and it's like the one room in the house we didn't have coax because uh. coax was everywhere in this house. It was like literally, uh, it, there are at least two rooms in this house that had at least three coax ports wow. in the wall. That one room didn't have it. Do you so know what kind of coax it was? Come in. Sorry? Do you know what, what, what kind of coax? I don't know what that means. What do like you mean? With the coax, right? With the there's different types of coax. Okay, so I only have the vaguest understanding of this because the electrician who came to tell me what, like you, you can sort of barely see it in the corner of the corner of the, the video. Let's see if I can get my finger. It's RJ11, RJ45. <laughs> Bring it in. See, you know. you see, see that hole in the wall right there? Yeah. Okay. That's well, right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's I think that's so. a, that would that's a coax port. Okay. What you can't see clearly there is the five coax cables that are com coming out of it. Um, some of them are thinner than the others, yeah. and those are lackluster, lower Yeah, RG, uh, RG59 or RG6. I don't, you know, we, I don't know. So, so we had, we my had dad that big problem. put that stuff in and split the, sh the hell out of it. So You could curse. It's okay. He's, he pulled it out of the wall. He's like, there's a splitter. There's another splitter. He's like, there's another splitter. <laughs> I think in yeah. some cases, my dad put a splitter on it just to make it go further. Not, not to split it, just to, just to, just to, extend just it, to give yeah. it the distance. But of course, that degrades the signal every single time. Anyway. You know, we uh, we had the same problem. Okay. So we had <laughs> the same exact thing. You know, this house is 100 and, 117 yeah. well, years old. And okay. when cable came in, in the late 70s, early 80s, whoever had this house, ran cable to every room. 
Yeah. And it's a crazy it was, person. but it, you know, it's the, it's a thinner gauge one. It would a RG 59, I guess. Right. That would be it. I and, don't, I don't know, but he, sh you can see it. You can tell there's the thick, nice coax that you're, we're all kind of used to. And then yeah. there's this thin crappy kind that yeah. I, I'm sure that it was designed to thread better through small spaces. Yeah. Or something like that. I, I replaced all the coaxes per myself and it took forever. And well, then I never used it. <laughs> because right. by the time I by the time I did it, pe you know, you didn't have cable in every room or need coax in every room. Yeah. So it turns out here we got lucky. So when the when the original guy came and did the modem back in July, he said, "Where do you want this thing?" And I said, "Let's throw it over there." And that one port is nice. It's the right kind of cable. It's not split in any way. It goes right to the box in the far side of the house. You can see it in the cellar. It's like a nice big thick cable. It's all by itself. And that has a great signal, a perfect signal. But the TV is, <laughs> you know, in the other direction. Yeah. So they had to drill holes in the wall and put a new cable in, and they did another new cable from the box. And again, in one of life's weird coincidences, the TiVo wouldn't connect to the home, the wireless network for some reason. And he's like trying to figure, he's like, maybe we'll switch the box out, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, if we put the cable modem in here, would that work? And he says, yeah, because you could just connect it with a cable. And I said, let's just do that. So now we actually, we took all the cable, all the crap that was in the corner over here is in like a cabinet and it's out next to the TV. And what that means too, which is kind of, I haven't done it yet, but what that means is I could run cables from the switch, which I do have attached to the, I guess it's attached to the cable modem or whatever. I don't, maybe it's attached to the Google thing. It doesn't matter. But the point is I could, all the things that are going to transmit in 4k to the TV could be connected with cables meaning they will have the best possible connection yeah. and thus the best possible quality. Yeah. I haven't even done it yet, but there were, it, I could do it, right? It's right there. So that's good, but it doesn't, I, it doesn't help. So um, in our tram, E in our tram says, that's some crazy Wi-Fi problems, Andrew. I was going to suggest the mesh. I, I don't have a mesh right now. I, you, gotta, I, you, you, you have to get a mesh. I have to get, I have, have to do to. a mesh. So what you I actually to. was able to do at one point because of Fios, because it runs on coax, it runs on Mocha, Mocha 2, I have yeah, an extra Fios box uh, router. So I ran that. I connected it to the cable, to, to, the, to the coax coming out, and I split it. And it worked fine. I had it all set up perfectly until they sent the firmware update. Every time they update the firmware, it breaks it. So then it would, it would sometimes work. It would work if I rebooted it, but it would shut down my internet. Like it would get whacked out with the IP internally. It just didn't work properly no matter what I did. And I, and I did it the right way because it worked for years until they updated it. So now I'm just going to run a run a mesh. Um, and luckily for me, so with the Google mesh, with the Google lines, how did you connect it to a power just to an outlet? Yeah. Okay. So my house at one point was wired. Um, the, the smoke detectors were all powered. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So they have a bat, they have a backup battery and then they were powered. So I, I took them all apart and I'm noticing every floor now has like, two or three of these and I could just hook up the Google mesh thing to the power directly and just mount it on the ceiling. Like it's like, it's a fire <laughs> nice. detector. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to do yeah. that. I'm just going to wire it that. straight That's into that funny. and just have it yeah. right on the wall. Um, because my fire stuff now is all in, you know, it's connected to power and it's like a carbon monoxide detector and it's a smoke detector. So it actually makes sense for me to do it this way. And I was shocked when I opened these fire, uh, the, the smoke detectors up, I was like, Oh wait, look, the, this power lines coming right down there. That's funny. Yeah, very, it was really cool. I can't recommend mesh wireless enough. Yeah. You may need, you know, depending on, you know, the age of your house and the thickness of the walls or the density of the walls or whatever yeah. it is, you might need more than like three of the little base stations or whatever, but who cares? Like yeah. put them, I just put them all over the house. So uh, you know? the, the chat room is actually trying to figure out what it is. So once again, it's not an internet issue. It's. For some odd reason, man, eight o'clock. Like, what? It doesn't matter. Eight o'clock. Now the sun's going down early because daylight yeah. saving. Uh, daylight saving is done. Hopefully not right now, but not yes. right now. But like five o'clock, <laughs> it starts yeah. happening again. Yep. And the way that I know is that I have a, like a like a Wi-Fi connected, i uh, an iPod touch mm -hmm. in my bathroom, so I could just play like Spotify or something, or like a podcast while I'm taking a shower, and yep. it no longer reaches. It does not connect. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And it's, it'll be fine in the mornings. It'll be fine in the afternoon. As soon as the sun goes down, done. It's so, so weird. <laughs> it, I guess so. <laughs> or something. I guess so. Yeah. It's really, really fascinating how, how that happens. Yeah. Um, I actually, 
I, I, I like having this discussion because a lot of people experience these issues. And, you know, Wi-Fi is one of those things that everybody uses at home. But I have to tell you, most people that have just like a router somewhere, they just deal with the crappy internet. Yeah, of course. Of they course. just deal with no, it. No, I know. I, look, we in the house we were in before, you know, if you think about like one, it, it's a rectangle. You were there. You saw yeah. it. So it's like a rectangle. It's like a shoebox. So at one long end of the shoebox, the cable modem is or the in my, well, it's a cable modem basically, whatever, off of Fios. And then at the far end of the house, on the other side, was like my wife's office, right? The, the Wi-Fi was never going to reach to her office, right? And so that was one of the places we had to put the Ethernet in. Um, when we come here and look at this place, which is half again as big, it's like, well, obviously Wi-Fi is not going to work here, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but the thought of like wiring this place for Ethernet is like so prohibitively expensive. I was like, let me let me at least try this mesh thing. And yeah. I got to tell you, I I, th I sort of thought like it would probably work okay. I figured I might have to buy maybe even an additional base station because of the size of the house, whatever. Um, it's been, it's been fantastic. Like it, it is yeah. one of the few things I own that just works. I, I like love it just that. Works. I, I actually yeah. love. And by the way, they're so not, rare. Uh, the, you use the Google Mesh. Now we're not saying Google is the answer. Um, I have no, 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 no. I, but and but, by the way, for you, uh, you're technical. There are more technical solutions that offer greater bandwidth and more sure. features and all kinds of other stuff. I, I sort of recommend this for normal people who don't want to get into the nitty gritty of, you know, networking in any way. 279, uh, you get great. three, you get three of these things. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Um, uh, I actually, uh, I want to get it, but I am trying to figure out. Okay. So the way that it works, okay, let me, let me understand this. One of the devices connects to your router, your modem, right? It sits next to whatever modem or router you have, correct? And then the other ones are access points? That's right. Okay. Yeah, they're all, yeah. So one yeah. is wired and the other it's ones are- It's a team are... of vehicles, but one of them is literally wired to the cable modem. That's okay. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, in my case, fun. I think um, you can pay RCN to do different things off the box. What I did was pay them nothing other than the cost of the box. So I can have one wire coming off of it that one wire goes to the Google thing, and then I must have the switch off of there because there's an Ethernet out. So uh, when I as well. when I ran all the cables for the studio, I actually ran I, I ran everything through the floor of my closet here. This used to be a closet that I took apart. Yep. Um, I ran all the cables to the basement, but while I was doing that, I said, you know what? I maybe one day because just to like have better Wi-Fi, I ran a hole from yep. my closet to the living room here that goes directly sure. to the router. So I ran the line. So I already have right. an Ethernet line going from the router all the way to the wall, and there's a hole in the wall now with nothing okay. connected. So I could just easily connect it there, run the power, and you're good. It's actually yeah. this is interesting. One single Wi-Fi cover covers 1,500 square feet. A set of three covers 4,500 square feet. Now that's that's a significantly sized house, 4,500 square feet. That's a big home. So you should be yeah. fine if you get yeah, yeah. you know. It's cool. There's a whole bunch of other ones. I know a lot of people will recommend something else too, but whatever works for you, whatever, you know, it'll work for you. I actually, the older I'm getting, the less I want to fiddle. I just want things to work. Um, so this may be the solution for me. I don't know. I think it is. Yeah. So Paul, before we wrap it up, uh, anything coming up? Are you in New York? I remember you said you were thinking about it or. Yeah, um, I'm not going to come. So that would have been next wednesday For and the, the problem is it's wednesday which is the windows weekly day so i had talked to them briefly about maybe trying to do something there i yeah. just couldn't make it happen so it's a it's a microsoft event it's not a it's not a secret it's like uh, microsoft connect is next week in new york um i can't go to that so. um also before we wrap it up brad uh mm -hmm. you're brad yep he made a post regarding twitter that i absolutely love and i want to read right here uh, okay. It was he made a tweet and he said how to fix Twitter hire a for any forum moderator from 2002 to teach them how to run a community service. <laughs> and yep. I think that is with all the stuff going on. I think that is the most uh, simple explanation on how to fix the problem. Uh, by the way, you and Brad do a phenomenal podcast first ring daily every single day. You do it for uh, the raw premium members. So if you go to the you can sign up and become a premium subscriber and you get access to all this great content, including the podcast. You also do one that's accessible to everybody live every single Friday. Uh, that's on uh, that's first ring daily. Also on the website. Also, you do a show called windows weekly, Paul. I don't know if, you, if people have heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's true, I do. <laughs> You're a very yeah. busy man between me yeah. and yeah. you know, you've taken on yeah. three people, me, Leo and Brad. Leo right. came first, so I was fine being the Gumar. 
Mm -hmm. Now with Brad, I'm a little jealous. Sure, sure. I don't know. There's always a, a younger, better looking yeah. someone, you know? I hate it. Hate it. Yeah. And then, of course, Mary Jo Foley. But me and mm -hmm. her are cool, so it's fine. Yeah. Brad and I are cool, too. Just, I get jealous sometimes. I see the back and forth <laughs> happening, and I go, eh, you know, I wish I was involved in this. I wish he what? took me to nice places. I wish yeah, we would so. go out on a Saturday once instead of Friday. <laughs> a Thursday. Well, that's it's uh, Thurs Thursday, old, like a stepsister. Right? Wasn't that the mafia's thing? You, the mob's thing? Yeah, you took your yeah, girlfriends yeah. out on Fridays and the wife on Saturday? Yes. Yeah. Guys, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, guys, if you really enjoyed the show, help us out. Fund us by going to patreon.com slash what the tech. You can fund us there as little as $1 per episode and it really helps us out uh, with doing these shows. I'm going to hang out for a little bit and do a post show. Paul and I are still trying to work out a schedule where we could do these extra shows every now and then. Maybe we could do something another day. I, I just, it's been so crazy this year. Let's get through th this year. Let's get through 2017 and start over for 2018. I promise you guys, we will figure this out with our schedule for 2018. I have a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, more reviews, more stuff like that. Paul, I know you got to go. That's it for this week, guys. Take care.